But to start the game really well, you know, we, we knew, you know, that's a really good team. They're not going to lay down. Um, and I thought we really came out with a sense of purpose and obviously through the first punch. And it's a good lesson for us because a, a good team's not just going to accept that. You know, they give them a lot of credit uh, with the way they closed the first half and um, played in the second quarter there. So, um, you know, good lesson for us. And I was, you know, really impressed by how we handled the second half, you know, to, to throw another a third punch. And I thought we really stood up. That was very encouraging. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that, too. I mean, the free throw disparity, Shea having the foul trouble, and your guys seem to kind of just weather all that and, and lean into their individual styles. What were you seeing out there? Yeah, um, I mean, I thought the guys, yeah, they everybody that won the game played well and with a sense of purpose. The free throws were, that was, like, peculiar. I mean, it was the fourth quarter before we shot a free throw. That was uh, crazy, and I wasn't, you know, particularly pleased with that, but... Um, you know, we weathered it, um, and we, you know, at the end of the day, it's not, it's not easy one way or the other. You know, there's going to be things you have to deal with and things you have to overcome. And I just thought we played right through it tonight. It didn't distract us, um, and we just we kept on it, and uh, obviously emerged. It was good. Coach wanted to ask you about Poku, especially in crunch time. He had that tough. He was at the five, going up against the Zubats, and really kind of handled his own, knocked down a couple of big threes. Just what were your overall thoughts on him in crunch time? Yeah, I thought he was um, he was really good at the, the way they were playing Shea. They were doubling Shea and um, really with everybody, and so he's a really good secondary decision maker and uh, so if he's the pick and roll player, he makes great decisions in the pocket, and even if uh, he's not in the pocket, and someone else is. It's a guard. Um, he's a great, you know, perimeter decision maker with extra passes, and obviously made some shots tonight. So uh, I was happy for him. I think you know he hadn't played the way he wanted to play um, the last couple games, and he, he kept himself ready, and he was ready to go tonight. I thought he was really good at the rim and on the glass as well. Yeah, Cliff Brunt, Associated Press. Uh, your thoughts on Lou Dort coming out of his slump and uh, had some key baskets there in the early part of the third quarter to keep you guys going when Shea was out. Yeah. His performance. Yeah, I thought his decision-making tonight was really good. I thought he took the right ones. He made. He had a great pace to him when he drove the ball, didn't force much up. Um, you know, I, I think the lesson there is, is, you know, he was struggling individually and he plugged into the team. You know, and I think that's an important. I told the team that after the game. That's an important uh, quality that good teams have. Is when you know things aren't always going to go well for the team. They're not always going to go well for the individual. We want to be a team that solves problems together. And I was really um, impressed by Lou and the poise that he showed and the trust that he showed in the team because uh, he came out tonight playing with the team and leaning on the team. And he played better as a result. We played better as a result. And he did a great job on Paul George. Daniel Bell BS. So um, they threw a boxing one at Shea late in the game, and you guys seemed to get more poise, and Shea was more trusting. Have you guys worked on situations like that, or was it just instinct? Uh, he's seen it before. We've seen it before. Um, yeah, I, I give him a lot of credit, too. You know, it's, it, it's tempting when you're as good of a player as he is to try to. Uh, be all gas and no breaks in those situations. But he just let the defense tell him what to do. He moved it out of it. Um, and then we did a great job in the in the secondary playmaking. You know, we got it out, got it ahead of the defense, kept it ahead of the defense, played with quick decisions. Uh, the guys did a great job. But it all starts with, you know, who's getting double teamed and the mentality they take to it. And when he's as trusting as he is to get off it, um, it gives those guys confidence to play the way they did, you know, when it comes out. And so it's everybody, and, you know, we handled it very well late. And then second quarter, they went on a 9-0 run. You guys had three straight turners. I think two of them were fouls. Yeah. And Jeremiah came down and ended it with a three. What's the – you didn't call a timeout. Most coaches call a timeout in that situation. What's the philosophy on just letting them figure it out? Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to be tough, you know, one way or the other, you know. And I told them at halftime, I was like, don't look at me, you know, like – we got to fight through some of that stuff. And again, we're not, you know, I'm not trying to win every run, you know, and every three minute uh, stretch. We're trying to build a resilient, tough um, team that has winning habits. And one thing is like being able to solve those problems in real time. So um, doesn't mean I'll never call timeout, obviously, but uh, I, th I wanted to see how we responded in that situation. So Andrew Select of The Athletic. Shea had four fouls going into halftime. You didn't start him in the second half. 
just thoughts on how he handled the foul trouble in the second half and then thoughts on how he handled not starting the second half. Well, you can't do that. Um, well, you can do it, but I think the reason a lot of people don't do it is because they're afraid of how the person's going to respond. Right. And the thing about Shea, um, you know, he's got confidence in the team and the team, you know, like I said, him moving it out of a double team or him coming off the bench in the second half, you know, is is pretty special. You know, there's not a lot of guys. There's some guys, you know, that are doing that, but not a lot of guys. And, um, you know, it's a testament to the trust that he has in the team. And I thought the group that started the second half fed off that confidence because, you know, if you have somebody that's moping around or protesting that sort of decision, um, that could bleed into the rest of the team, especially somebody that has the impact in our culture that he does. And so uh, it's a huge credit to him. And I thought, um, you know, he handled the foul trouble okay. I thought there were some plays he could have made legal plays on um, and stuck his nose in the fight a little bit more. Um, we'll watch that with him, learn from it. Part of if I'm going to leave you out there with fouls, you got to keep playing. And uh, he definitely could have done better there. But big picture wise, like I thought the way that he handled that and the way that he handled the double teams late. Um, is a really good anecdote into how much he trusts his teammates. And then at the end of the game, you had two consecutive possessions where you had Trey screening for Shea and then the inverse where Shea is screening for him. How, like, how much is that a credit to those guys that they both will let each other do that at the end of a pretty important game? Yeah, another example of it. You know, it's just you can you can only go so far. You know, if the sum of the parts are better than the whole and. Um, you know, we work hard organizationally to try to make sure that that's not the case here, um, even if we're taking one step backwards to get it done. And I give the team credit because we have a bunch of guys. We've gone out and acquired a bunch of guys. They've done a great job of finding people that are just naturally aligned to that mentality. And so we've got players that um, when we talk about those sorts of things, we're speaking their language, and that's how you get forward momentum out of that stuff. Mark, you guys shot 45% from three on a high volume of attempts. I know you talk about, like, the game-to-game -game volatility of yeah. individual three-point shooting numbers, but did you like the looks that you were able to get today? Yeah, I think that's the best way to handle the volatility is um, coach the decision-making on the shot. You know, we want to generate quality shots, and, you know, a quality shot could be different from person to person. I mean, when Trey Mann, you know, creates space off the dribble, that's a quality shot. You know, everybody on the team... That's not a quality shot for everyone. And so um, we really try to be, to the question last night or the other night, ruthlessly consistent in terms of our process, uh, even with something as volatile as shooting. It's like we need to just take good looks. And, um, you know, I thought the other night we actually we shot a pretty high quality, even though we shot poorly, and I thought we just stuck with that tonight. And that's what good teams do. They can stick with their stuff through the volatility of the season, and in this case the volatility of shooting. Trey is so good at getting to that step back, and I assume it's on in the scouting report for every team you guys play. But I guess what does it say to how lethal that move is that he can still uh, create space with it even when guys might know it's coming? Yeah, I mean he's just got really like um, he's got really like nimble feet. He's just got like a special set of feet there. Um, has anybody ever said that statement in their life? No, <laughs> I bet he's. <laughs> Very honored, though. Yeah. <laughs> tell him. You know, tell him. Coach loves your feet. Uh, but I, I, the other thing is he's improved his strength and his finishing, and I think it makes it harder, you know, to to manage him. You know, like, it'd be different if he just couldn't finish because then you just crowd him and, you know, come hell or high water, you just make him get inside the line. But he's done a good enough job with decision-making and finishing. I thought that was on display in the first game. To the, where you have to honor it, and he keeps you honest with that. And then if you gap him, you know, the one in front of our bench with Zubak, you know, Zubak's just trying to catch the drive, and he's able to just make a quick little move and um, and create enough space to get it off. Anyone else? Thank you, Coach. All right, guys.